Hello and welcome to this tutorial on learning the tools in Premiere Pro. Today we're going to look at two tools, we're going to look at the razor tool and what is probably the coolest of all the tools in Premiere Pro, the rate stretch tool. Now they're found in your tool panel, usually the tool panel when you first open Premiere Pro is up here, however I've moved my tool panel just down here to the right of my timeline. If you want to know how to do that see one of my previous tutorials on customising your user interface. These are the tools, this is the razor tool which has a keyboard shortcut of C which is easy to remember because it's C for cut and just above that is the rate stretch tool which has a keyboard shortcut of the letter X which is just to the left of the letter C. Let's start with the razor tool. Now the razor tool you can select and initially you think that this is the best option. You want to trim a piece of footage in your timeline, you go to the place you want to trim it and you just cut and then you can cut again. However this is not a good way to do editing. I'm going to control Z on the PC a couple of times or command Z on the Mac. If you want to trim something back rather than cutting and deleting you want to take your selection tool so hit the keyboard shortcut the letter V and then get your trim tool just by hovering at the end of your clip and pulling it back to the point you want to trim. That way you leave what's called tail footage. So there is tail footage underneath here so that if I was to bring another clip in here and I wanted to do a transition there would be tail footage for it to use. Don't use the razor tool unless you absolutely have to. However, there are instances where the razor tool is invaluable. I'm going to control Z on the PC, command Z on the Mac to get this back to its original length. Now I'm going to come back to the razor tool because first I want to demonstrate how the rate stretch tool works. And as I said before, this is probably the coolest of all the tools. It plays with time. So if you take your rate stretch tool, go to the end of your clip. If you pull it shorter, you're going to be speeding the clip up. And if you pull it longer, you're going to be slowing the clip down. It's very intuitive. If the clip's shorter, you've got all the information. You haven't lost any of it, but it's just going to be played a lot quicker. Now, one little option that I always apply when I'm doing any time work in Premiere Pro, and uh, there will be another tutorial because there's at least two other ways of working in time. But if you have your clip selected, go up to the clip menu and then go down to video options and make sure you select this option here called frame blend. This might slow things down slightly but it's going to create a much better look particularly when you lengthen things. When you shorten things Premiere Pro basically drops frames so it can play it quicker but when you lengthen something generally speaking it would just repeat frames which can make it look a bit stuttery but when you choose that option clip, video option, frame blend what you're asking it to do is create brand new frames interpreted between the frame before and the frame after where the gap would be so that it actually gives a much smoother motion. So frame blend is always something to enable for whatever clip you're working on when you're doing anything to do with time. Okay, so let's have a very brief look at this clip in its standard format. If I hit play, this is an introduction clip where the gentleman stands up and then stares at the camera where somebody had some motion graphics for his name. However, we didn't quite know how long he would need and he stood there staring at the camera for a bit too long. So actually we just needed to speed up where he just stands and looks. Okay, so that's at its standard rate. If we take the rate stretch tool now and we pull it back to five seconds, you'll see that we have all the information. It's just played a lot quicker. Now please note, this red bar at the top means that the clip is not rendered. So something will play and it might not look that good because it's not going to be playing at real time. If you want it to render so that you can have a green bar up here so that it will play properly, you need to hit the enter key on your keyboard. So if I hit the enter key, it's going to tell me it's got 126 frames that it needs to render through. It won't take long on this machine, but it can be annoying when clips get a bit longer. Okay, so that's done and now we have green. You can see he stands up, moves around, whoosh, off he goes. Play that one more time. We've got all the information, everything's in there and he just plays extra quickly. That's what the rate stretch tool has done. Now let's say that we want it to play a lot longer. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to control Z to take it back to its original length and now I'm going to slow it down. So take it from just before 20 seconds right up to just over 30, say 35 seconds roughly. Okay, now again I've got the red line. If I want it to play properly, I would hit the return button And when it's finished, it automatically plays from the beginning. Now the guy is much slower. 
you can pretty much see if you look very carefully those those blended frames and everything happens a whole lot slower it's smoother because we've got frame blend in there and it gives that sort of almost film look of slow motion and he stands there forever waiting for us to put his titles up okay so that's how the tool works and the control Z command Z on the Mac just to get back to the original what I really want to do with this clip is have him so that it's normal speed till he's picked up the bag and settled. Then I want him to speed up a bit between this point and the point just before he throws the bag. And then go back to normal speed or even slightly quicker at that point there. So let's just choose just before he throws the bag, which is about there. Now we can choose our razor tool and we can cut. And we'll go back to the part just after he's settled with the bag, which is there and we'll cut again because you see what we want to do is apply the rate stretch just to this section in the middle and this is an example where cutting the waveform is going to help us do that properly and quickly okay so I'm going to go back to my selection tool I'm going to select the clip in the middle the one that we're going to change and I'm just going to check clip video options frame blend is still on because it was selected for the whole clip which we've just cut up now I can take my rate stretch tool and I can pull it in a bit just to make it that little bit quicker so that the audience isn't kept waiting so long and I can right click in the gap ripple delete go back to my arrow tool and now what I need to do is just hit the return key on my keyboard to render that section with red hit return 93 frames bombs through it in no time and that's now green saying it's rendered and it's playing at normal speed from the beginning and he picks up the bag and then he holds the bag and he stops and it just plays that little bit quicker so that we can get onto the next section and that's how I've used the rate stretch tool just to make it work that little bit better and using the razor tool to cut the section that we wanted to modify and just pull them all together okay so let's look at a slightly more complex example here's some footage from Adobe and I'm just going to play it by the way this yellow bar up here means that my graphics card should play this quite well it doesn't play it particularly well but hey let me just demonstrate it to you okay if I was that man I would be running fast and I would be jumping high but if you actually look in the middle just here you'll see that what we have is actually a very high jump I think it's probably all the adrenaline rushing through him with all these explosions right up his backside. Anyway, what I want to do is go from there where he leaps, do the leap in slow motion, and then have him landing and running, possibly even at a slightly higher speed. Okay, so the first thing I would do with this clip is cut where I need to cut. Incidentally, you can't see the audio here, but it is down here because there are two mono tracks down here. And if you can't see them and you've got a whole load of spare tracks you want to get rid of, you can right-click, delete tracks, and then click in this box here for delete audio tracks and leave it at all empty tracks click OK and it's pulled those up so we can see it clearly okay so select my razor tool and cut at the place where he takes off and then pull across to the place where he lands which is just there there that's it and cut again now that's the area we want him to be in slow motion we've got that highlighted out now I can't extend this clip if I select my rate stretch tool I can't extend it because there's another clip in the way so actually what I need to do is pull this clip out of the way when I move this clip forward and of course the first thing I'm going to do is actually select the clip go up to clip video options and make sure frame blend is on because this is going to be quite a long slow motion and I want it to look as good as possible now I can select my rate stretch tool and we can pull it out to whatever length we want it to be well, let's try it up at about two seconds two and a half seconds let's try it there and then in this space here we can right click ripple delete and I can hit the return key to render this section in the middle 73 frames that'll be very quick and now we're ready to play so he runs along takes off slowly and rushes off and if we want this last section to go a lot quicker we can take our rate stretch tool and pull it in so that the end section we haven't lost any of the information bear in mind but he's just going to run a lot quicker so once again we've got the red line here saying it needs to be rendered interesting we have all three colors we have going to be played by your graphics card should be okay rendered should be fine and needs to be rendered so let's just hit the return key and it'll render just this section 
Again, only 99 frames. It should happen very quickly. And we can look at the whole thing. Normal speed. Slow motion. Extra fast. So that's how we've used the razor tool in conjunction with the rate stretch tool to produce quite a cool result. One of the advantages of using the rate stretch tool in Premiere Pro over some of the other time control methods that you have is that it actually affects the audio as well. Some of the other methods will shorten or lengthen the video, but the audio, although staying linked, will just stay as it is, which can be quite awkward. Obviously, the audio doesn't sound perfect and you might need to do some other work, but it's worked for us. One final thing to show you for this introduction is how do I affect a whole bunch of clips together? Now say I've got this introduction here with lots of music and there's the Mr. Right intro that we were talking about and there's a Miss Read intro where we've done actually the same thing where she stands for too long and we needed to shorten her. But what if I want to change the length of the whole clip? I want to change everything in one go. Obviously what I don't want to do is go in and change each individual part. Well what you can do is you can nest this sequence in another sequence. How do we do that? Well we find our sequence. There's the intro sequence. And if you have Premiere Pro CS5, you can click it and drag it and drop it into this new sequence icon. Or alternatively, if you don't have that option, you go to New Items, Sequence, and you create a sequence that you happen to know is exactly the same size as the footage that you're already using, and then click OK. Call that Sequence 12. And then you pull the intro sequence into that new sequence and pull it out so you can see the whole thing. Is it all there? Let's just pull the timeline through. Yep, it's all there. And what I can do is select the clip again and go to Clip, Video Options, Frame Blend, and then I can affect the whole thing and just make it that little bit quicker. As you can see, we made it precisely 30 seconds. Well, what if I want to make it 28 seconds, say, or 27 and a half, or whatever it is? Let go, it's just over 28 seconds. I've just reduced the whole thing by just under two seconds just by pulling the whole clip in because I nested it in another sequence. And that's how I've affected the whole thing and used the rate stretch tool to do it in no time at all. A brilliant little tool. Now that you know you've got it, I think you'll find you'll use it all the time. Actually, thinking about it, there is one other thing. Go back to this intro sequence. Sometimes you have a piece of footage that you want to bring in. Let's just bring this one here and pull it up. That's just that little bit too long or just that little bit too short to fit in the gap that you want it to fit into. But all the information is there. If you go any further, you go onto something else and you lose it. Or if you go any shorter, it doesn't look as good. You need to have the whole thing fit, but the gap it's to fit into doesn't match the clip. What would you use? You'd use the rate stretch tool. So if it was exactly the right amount of detail, everything was in there, but it needed to last just that little bit longer, you'd stretch it out. Or, if it was just that little bit too big, and you needed it to fit into the gap, and you didn't want to lose any of the action, you just pull it in. And then, it fits into the space, and you've achieved your end result. Well, do use these tools, enjoy them, they're great fun. My name's Andrew Davis. thank you for watching.